Um, thank you for the kind introduction and uh, welcome to my talk of our work uh, on attacking touchscreens using electromagnetic interference. Um, this work was done in collaboration with our colleagues of the Zhejiang University. So uh, capacitive touchscreens uh, are getting more and more utilized as the primary input source of many devices use, used by hundreds of millions of users. Uh, from uh, laptops and screens over IoT devices and wearables to even cars and medical devices, um, capacitive touchscreens are getting used because of their high precision, low wear and multi-touch support. And um, arguably, as of today, one of the largest group of touchscreen controlled devices are for sure um, smartphones consisting of 100% screen basically. But uh, recently, Articles like this one emerged, where a device under the influence of EMI uh, was booking a presidential suite of a user without his knowledge. While this may be a fun example, also more serious examples exist. For example, this one, um, a knowledge-based article of Lenovo, stating that some of their touchscreens do not work correctly under fluorescent light, which emits a, a large amount of uh, EMI into the environment. So how does this even uh, happen? Here you see um, a touchscreen pipeline. On the left side, the touch panel, which, which gets sensed by the analog front end IC. Um, this senses uh, changes in capacitance on the touch panel when touched, which then forwards these measurements to the microcontroller unit, which interprets these changes as uh, touch points and forwards this to the operating system, which is then uh, interpreting it further, uh, for example, as uh, swipes or multi-touch uh, touches. So you can see that interference on the left side, on the physical side, will lead to wrong output uh, on the digital side. So we already know that an OS depends on benign touch data for any task, including security critical ones. So that's also why um, manufacturers are designing these circuits to be resilient against unintentional environment uh, EMI. But what if an attacker uses EMI? So since the touchscreen is the main user interface, wrong input will lead to wrong output uh, and initiate wrong actions. For example, with impactful consequences uh, in many areas like banking, voting, and medical applications. So therefore, we conclude that the touchscreen may be a serious security and privacy threat when under attack. And uh, that's why we asked ourselves, uh, is it possible to control touchscreens remotely and precisely using uh, intended electromagnetic interference for, uh, as an attack? Uh, but first, uh, some look about uh, the related work. Uh, EMI has already been used to attack um, various devices in different scenarios from uh, degrading the functionality using a DOS attack on devices, for example, security systems, to more targeted attacks such as fault injection in embedded devices, to medical devices, to even flipping bits in embedded devices, manipulating temperature readings of sensors, and injecting voice into microphone circuits. But only uh, very recently, EMI is also used to attack touch screens. Uh, unfortunately, this most related work to ours uh, has some shortcomings. Uh, it needs user interaction, so the user has to touch the screen while it is attacked. It is not targeted. It can only scatter touch points randomly and not inject new ones. And it has limited attack capabilities. It can only scatter touch points and not gestures like swipes. So that's where we came up with our attack, Ghost Touch, uh, which is the first work to use EMI to inject precise touch points without user interaction. Uh, first, some background about a touchscreen. Uh, you can imagine a touchscreen consisting of a mesh of horizontal transmitting lines and vertical receiving lines, uh, which do not touch itself because they are separated by a sheet of glass. And then there is the sensing circuit, which is connected uh, to these receiving and transmitting lines. In the most easiest uh, case, it uses the scan driving method which you, um, sends an excitation signal, basically putting charge uh, on the transmitting uh, lines, uh, one after another. And for example, at t, uh, time T2, it is also sending, uh, sensing the induced charge signal. And for example, 
if a finger will touch one of these intersections, it will act as the third plate of a capacitor. The first plate, the receiving line, the second plate, the transmitting line, and the third one, your finger. So it is for sure uh, changing the induced current into, uh, in the receiving line, which also changed the charge signal, and this is detected as a touch point. So our goal is now to achieve the same, but without a finger and using EMI. Uh, EMI will induce an AC current into the charge signal and will change the charge signal. So assume an attacker uh, wants to press the OK button to a security critical task. He first has to generate a broadband EMI signal to couple to the RX line because we don't know how long it is. Um, we use a broadband one instead of the single frequency one. Um, he has to tweak the starting time when he injects this um, EMI signal to match the exciting lines ti uh, timing to not click somewhere, uh, somewhere else but on, only on this button. Um, for example, if the sensing circuit is sensing with 120 um, times per second the whole screen, then we also have to inject with 120 pulses per second. Be this is because um, the EMI will inject an AC current into the um, receiving lines and sometimes it will uh, uh, lower or higher the amount which is uh, measured by the sensing circuit. So not every injected EMI uh, will be detected as a touch, but eventually uh, some will be detected and the sensing circuit will interpret them as touch points. So the uh, scenario we evaluated is uh, the following, for example. Um, Alice uh, is, putting her face, uh, <laughs> is putting her phone face down on a table and the attack equipment is hidden under the table and the attacker is now able to inject touch points and uh, control the device. So what can the attacker do? For example, uh, sending a message with a malicious link, clicking on it, um, unlocking the phone uh, by inputting a pin number and advancing its attack, uh, or even calling the phone, uh, injecting a swipe up action and uh, accepting the phone to eavesdrop on Alice. So for our evaluation, we used the chip shouter device with 120 um, uh, pulses per second. And here on the left, you see a smartphone in landscape mode where we injected some uh, uh, multiple hundreds of touch points, always at the same area on two consecutive RX lines. So by using beam forming or smaller and bigger antennas, you can couple to only one RX line or two or even more. So it's also poss possible to inject uh, um, uh, multi-touch gestures. And we are also able to inject uh, swipes into the phone, swipes up and down by tweaking the injection frequency a bit, uh, a bit higher than 120 hertz or a bit lower than 120 hertz because like you can see here, they are distinctive touch points injected, but two distinct touch points in the aerial and timely vicinity to each other will be interpreted by the OS as a swipe up or down. So we also evaluated uh, many smartphones. Uh, here you can see uh, six smartphones where our precise uh, attack was uh, possible. And for example, when you look at the Nexus 5X, you can see that we are able to inject uh, up to 8.2 touch points per second with a standard deviation of only 14.6 and 90.2 uh, pixels on the X and Y axis. So it's very precise, contained. We can inject uh, exactly where we want. Uh, the next three, uh, we were uh, unfortunately not able to inject precise touch points, but we were able to inject random touch points where, which can be used for like a DOS attack. And the last two, we were not able to inject any touches, unfortunately. Um, we think this is because of a heavy EMI shielding or the use of uh, different uh, driving methods, such as frequency driving method, where we have to change our approach to also attack these devices. And with this, I conclude my talk and I'm happy to take questions. Thank you.